Howdy folks! I'm Cal Kellogg and it's time for This Week in Fishing and as you can see it's raining but we're all hoping for sun. Um, despite the rain there's some really good bites out there. This week we're going to talk about river shad, river stripers, delta stripers, San Francisco Bay potluck action. Uh, we're going to talk mountain trout, foothill trout, river trout. We're even going to throw in a little bit of Lake Oroville king salmon action. Um, our destination this week is Lewiston Reservoir and the Trinity region. I'm going to give you a tip how to, how to stack the odds in your favor next time you're out after trout. And heck, we might even talk about Duckworth boats a little bit. So hang on, I'm going to go in and get dry and you folks enjoy this week in fishing. No, it's not March, it's almost June, and the fact that I'm wearing rain gear and a stocking cap and I'm driving firewood back and forth to my front porch is a, is a major clue as to what I'm going to say in this week's Hot Bite Report. Um, the spring fishing conditions are there. Once this rain stops and things warm up, fishing's going to get right back on track, but right now at a lot of locations, things are either suffering badly or they are totally shut down. For example, I was going to be up at French Meadows Reservoir today. Am I there? No, it's snowing there. It's probably going to snow two feet up there. So I'm derailed, you know, on that bite for several days at a minimum. And it looks like we have another week of this unstable weather uh, ahead of us. But let's talk about what the hot bites are right now. Here are my hot bites for the week. Number one, Lake Davis. Red hot rainbow trout fishing. My buddy was up there before the most recent storm. He had 20 fish to 25 inches um, while trolling spoons. Very good bite and it's going to get better as the weather warms and the bugs get more active at Davis. Um, Lake Elmanor, Brian Ricucci, Big Daddy's Guide Service, he continues to pound big fish. He had a nine pound brown this week which he caught and released. Tons of big rainbows that range up to five and six pounds and the occasional big king. Uh, bug hatches have started up there. Brian's trolling fast. He's pounding them with hardware most days, spoons, minnow plugs, and the rewards are just awesome. So, Elmanor's great. Davis is great. Moving down to Sierras, Lake Tahoe Mackinac, very good. They're also catching the occasional brown, but if you go up there, you're gonna get a limit of Mackinac without trying real hard, and you might get a big bonus brown. Um, Right next door, the kokanee bite at Stampede continues to be very good. The fish aren't huge. They're 12 to 14 inches at the top end. They're biting anything orange, anything pink. Easy limits, easy fishing. All you gotta do is wait out this weather and get after them, and uh, you're gonna catch some fish. Um, moving down the state further, the hottest kokanee bite in the state is taking place at Don Pedro Reservoir. Uh, Monty Smith of Gold Country Sport Fishing has just been killing them out there. Um, I got some pictures the other day of a double limit. Those fish range from a pound and a half to two full pounds. Big, beautiful, chrome, football sized fish. Um, strongly encouraging you to get out there. New Maloney's is good. It's kicking out kokanee, but they're not nearly as big as the fish at uh, Don Pedro. So that's a great option. Of course, um, the Valley Striper Bite, it just keeps rolling forward. Shad bites are exploding in all the major rivers, the American, the Feather, the Yuba, the Sac. That's very good, that's very steady. Um, the Upper Sacramento, the Upper Lower Sacramento from say Redding to Red Bluff, great fishing, wild rainbows, catch and release fishing. You can't beat it if you've never tried it. I always rave about it, it's very good. In the Delta proper, Stripers, stripers, stripers continue to be the big headline. The fishing's very good. You can drift for them, plug for them, troll for them, soak, cut bait. You're going to get a limit. It's that simple. Um, Collins Lake Trout. Collins Lake has exploded. Um, it is absolutely full of fish. They are biting. It's going to get a little muddy with all this rain, but uh, it's not going to stay muddy for long, and that might not even shut the bite down. Trollers are getting fish on Rapalas. Bank guys are getting fish on Power Bay. 
Um, the average fish is about two pounds and they've got eight pound fish in the last several days. So it's a very exciting time at Collins Lake. Like I said, the lake is just stuffed full of planted fish. There's holdover fish and they are re all ready to go and I can't wait to get up there. Um, I got some pictures from Englebright this week. Very good rainbow trout fishing at Englebright Reservoir. Um, flashers behind worms, that'll get you a limit. Could also soak inflated worms off the bank, that'll get you a limit. So that's very good. Once again this week though, I gotta say, the best bite in the state is live bait potluck action in San Francisco Bay. Big numbers of halibut that range up to about 22 pounds, getting two per rod on, on most charter boats most days, and there are a bunch of stripers in the mix too. Stripers that range all the way up to 12, 14 pounds, and they're getting 20 to 30 bonus stripers a day. When the tides are big, stripers bite. When the tides are small, the halibut bite. And most days, you're getting a mix of both, uh, both species of fish. Um, outside, the salmon bite has sputtered a little bit now that the season's back on track. Um, they're catching fish, but they don't have that bite dialed in yet. Um, and the bottom fish action, it's outstanding. Nobody cares. We'll catch those bottom fish later on. Right now, it's time to, to target those halibut and the stripers. Those bites should hold up really well most of the summer, but get those halibut while you can, man. They're the best eating fish in our fishery, in, a, in the opinion of a lot of people, and they are on the chomp. Plus, that's just a fun day out on the water. So, there you have it. Um, I didn't mention black bass. There's a great, a lot of great black bass bites going on. I'm sure they're a little off with all this rain and cold weather coming through. But again, those bites will rebound too. But it's all happening now. It's spring, it's almost June. And the downside of this rain is that it's kind of derailed the action in some places. But the upshot is it's gonna prolong the spring conditions. We're gonna have trout near the surface longer. They're gonna to continue to bite. We've got a lot of great fishing ahead. So don't get too down in the dumps. We'll be out there soon and we'll be whacking them. If I ever get done moving firewood, that is. So that's about it. Uh, don't forget, we're not, not far away from the Eagle Lake opener. You never know what that's gonna bring these days. That used to be lights out limits. Um, the fall fishing's been great up there, but uh, we'll see what the opener holds this year. Sometimes it's slow, sometimes it's hot. It's always worth the trip. And remember, you get up to Eagle Lake and you're struggling, Elmanor is 45 minutes away and you're not gonna struggle there. You're gonna have to work for your fish, but they're there, they're biting, they're big, and they're bad. So anyway, I'm gonna be traveling the state soon. I'm gonna be hooking a bunch of trout and other species. So we'll catch you next week on This Week in Fishing. And hopefully at that time, it's gonna be sunny and this rain's gonna be gone and we're all gonna be smiling and yelling fish on. Anyway, thanks a lot folks. We'll catch you next week. All right, well, we've got uh, Captain Kevin Brock of FishKevinBrock.com on the line, and he's got a bunch of breaking news about trout, Oroville Kings, and then he's going to break down the shad and striper fishing in the river for us. How are you today, Kevin? Hey, hey good afternoon, Cal. I'm doing great. You know, we just got off the boat, and, and it's, a, it's been a long day, and we just caught tons of fish. And we're fishing up there in the Redding area, and we were trout fishing. You know, it's a catch and release area up there. Yep. But we're doing, uh, depending on how many anglers we have, 35 to 60 fish a day. Wow. Um, our big fish today was, yeah, like 24 inches. Lots of big fish. Lots of fish. Doubles, triples. Uh, everyone's getting them. I mean, what a great time. I mean, we ended on a triple today. Um, and uh, you know, just, just fantastic fishing. Oh. I, I, I was talking to my guys today. It was so cool, Cal. You know, we're drifting down the river, and I'm like, I almost, I almost, Take this place for granted. Again, we're fishing the Redding area, right? Redding, you know, down to Anderson, you know, all the way down a little bit further down into Red Bluff sometimes. Mm -hmm. But that whole area right there holds so many trout, mm -hmm. and it's so unutilized. You know, there's quite a few guys that fly fish it, but we'll fish little pieces of bait, or we'll fish little crickets, or uh, little glow bugs, or fly fish, or poor little tiny maglips. Uh, you know, you have to make some cool ones. Those those fish just nail the snot out of those. Yeah, but to see that many wild slash, you know, spawning slash cold water resident fish 
right in you know Northern California, you know, a couple hours from Sacramento. Right. People talk about going to Montana and going all these different places, and those are cool rivers too. That everyone is cool, each their own. But right. when you land, you know, in a boat with two or three guys, fifty fish, you know, and they're averaging sixteen inches, and you're getting twenty inches and stuff. That's incredible. Oh it's yeah, it's amazing, is what it is. I mean, uh, I, I've been doing it up there for twenty. It'll be my twenty fifth year up there now. Wow. And knock on wood, we have never, never been skunked, and it's just lots of big fish. Um, you know, there is some technical stuff to it, running the boats and things like that. Once you get it down, but boy, there's lots of fish to be caught. That is for sure. It's it's an incredible fishery. I told my guys today. I mean, I fish all over the world, but I chase fish all over the states. That's all mm-hmm. I do is fish. And what a highlight it is to come back in just downtown Redding, California, floating underneath some bridges and whacking all these big old trout. It is cool. That's what blew me away. I went and fished Yellowstone, and, and it was great. It was fun, and I caught a bunch of different fish, different species, but it was no better, the fishing I had, than, than the wild rainbow fishing up there in, in the Redding area. That's that's for sure. So t- tell us yeah, about Orville. Tell, tell us about I'm that Orville. You oh, tell us about that Orville bite. Oh, oh, people are asking me yeah, all the I'll time. What, right, right before the storm hit, this last week, I was over on Orville. We had uh-huh. to cancel one trip out because of the rain, because the family didn't want to fish in the rain. Hey, I can't blame them there. Yeah. You know? But uh, we're getting quite a few. We hadn't started getting the bigger ones yet. I think everything's just, with this spring and everything's cold, just prolonging a little later. We got a bunch of nice salmon. We got some spotted bass mixed in between. Mm-hmm everything's ready to pop but the fish didn't have a lot of pond smelts or anything in them yet so okay. what it tells me is some of those fish are still out deep they're not moving into the shallow water yet you know okay. the 50 to 30 feet mark somewhere right. in between there but i think this next week this next week i'll know for sure but once it warms back up and this last storm pushes through we're going to start over on orville and you know if it's anything at all like last year we got four or five guys We'd have mm-hmm. limits of five fish for everybody. Oh, wow. Plus, you know, glanding some, losing some, and fish up to five pounds. Very and cool. And with them, you get, you get, you know, 10 fillets of salmon per mm-hmm. person. Yeah. So the catch and release trout thing is spectacular. But let's be honest, some of us like to take fish home and eat them. Yeah. You know, these Orville Kings give us that opportunity to take families, people, move over to Orville, catch a bunch of fish, still have a bunch of fun, take a bunch of fish home to eat and, you know, accomplish, you know, everything we need to accomplish. So that's a neat fishery. We're bouncing back and forth on that. I got a couple boats every day, either one on Orville, one on uh-huh. up in Reading, but we're just running back and forth like crazy. So cool. it's a really neat fishery if you want to catch and take home some fish. That's that's cool. I've been getting a lot of questions. Guys are all fired up about the Kings, and that's great news that it's getting started up there. So there'll be a lot of happy happy yeah, people. It's just getting going. You know, I was getting some limits for a couple people, but it was it was tough to get limits for four or five people. Mm-hmm. You know, and, I, and so I think that we're just right at that point as the bait's going to start moving up. It's going to push those fish in, so we're ready to rock and roll with that. Very cool, and uh, and of course, you were telling me the shad and the striper bite just remains really, really good. Tell us a little bit about that, and it, then I'll let you go. It is amazing. It's amazing. You know, a few weeks ago, we were, maybe three weeks ago, you got to hang out with us, and we got to go down. We were in the Butte City area and worked down towards Calusa. You know, lots of fish, easy limits, uh, some big mm-hmm. fish, small fish, you know, lots of school fish, just good action for everybody. Well, after, let's see, Thursday... Uh, we striper fished out of Calusa, and it was a little tougher. We got mm-hmm. some fish, uh, you know, down there by the Red Sea and some fish down by Loopies all the way down towards Grimes, but we had to move all the way down. There were some fish further down. So we heard the right. guys were really getting them, you know, even further down, you know, down what we call a Mosquito Beach all the way down, right. even up into Beer Can, all the way down into Verona. Uh-huh. So some fish were moving back. So I know guys are still catching a lot of stripers. Uh, I haven't been on them the last three or four days. Mm-hmm. But what we've got now since Thursday, three days, whatever it is. Thing. And uh, so what we've got now, though, is all these shad moving up and tons of shad. We were catching shad, you know, three weeks ago on meadows while we were striper fishing. Right. There's shad starting to funnel in everywhere now. It's going to be a big run of shad. Oh, so good. as soon as this storm system comes through mm-hmm. and finishes up on Monday and everything stables up Tuesday, Wednesday, and we start getting some sunshine and everything looks good, 
the shad bite's going to go wide open. Yes. And I know they're getting them at Verona, and I know they're getting them down in rural snack, yep. everywhere else down there and off the American the mouth. So oh, yeah. it's just it's just a matter of time before that blows wide open. I think it's just it, we're just waiting on the weather. Very good. Well, exciting, uh, exciting days here in this in this prolonged spring we've been having. If people want to jump on your boat, Kevin, how do they get on that big Duckworth and catch some fish with you? You know, they they can jump on any time. Uh, you know, they can either jump on our website at fishkevinbrock.com. Mm -hmm. uh, they can go on there and ask anything, any questions they want. Even if they just want information on where I'm fishing at, hey, I'll let them know. Mm -hmm. They can go on our online store, buy products that we're using to catch fish with. Yep. And they can call our 800 number anytime at 800-995-5543. All right. Someone from the office will get back with you as soon as possible, if not myself, if it's in the evening. And we'll book a trip. We'll hang out. We'll have a good time. Remember, we're family and pet friendly. Mm -hmm. Bring your puppies along, dogs along, things like that. Hey, bring them out, kids along, everybody. Right on. I love to catch fish. That's what cool. we're about. So thanks, Cal. I sure appreciate that. And yeah, this time of year, <laughs> there's just not enough time. Because yeah. every single river has got fish in it. Absolutely. Well, thanks a lot, Kevin. You uh, go get some, get some downtime because I know you're going to be back out on the water tomorrow. And I will talk to you again real soon, man. Yep, bright and early. Now it's the evening prep work, and uh, we thank everybody. Hey, Cal, thank you, you for uh, what you're doing and, and uh, having us on the air and enabling us to do what we do. So we appreciate you very much. Thank you, Kevin. I'll catch you later. Thank you. Well, there you have it, folks. It's Kevin Brock, and I guarantee you, you know, being a fishing guy, this is a tough job. He's going out there right now. He's probably going to clean his boat, make sure he's got all the gear he needs for tomorrow. He's going to be back out there after those trout again. Um, having a good old time with a new group of clients. So anyway, he just broke down the river fishing. No matter what you want to get out after, if you want to get after some shad, some trout, whatever it is, now is the time to go. We got several more weeks of this spring action to come, but things are starting to peak now. And I think Kevin's exactly right. In fact, I know he is. Once, once these weather systems pass through the area and we get back into some stable, warm weather, you're just going to see things go nuts. Because even if the bites slow down a little bit with this bad weather, the fish still want to do what they want to do in the springtime. They want to spawn. They want to feed. They want to get on with the summer and you know late spring season. So they're poised to go. All we need is a little sun, a little warm weather, and things are going to get super exciting. And... Uh, I, for one, am really stoked about that Oroville King Salmon Bite. I'll be doing some landlocked King tutorials upcoming on the show. Um, but until then, that's just great news that that bite is starting to go. That should be that bite should go through late spring all the way into early summer and beyond. And uh, those landlocked kings are super fun. Anyhow, thanks a lot to Kevin Brock. And we'll be back right after this. Hey everybody, this is, this is Kevin Brock and you know we're out here uh, striper fishing today. We just got done, caught limits for five guys, well plus another three on the other boat, so we had a great successful day. We wanted to jump out here and just talk a little bit about what we're using, what we're doing, how we do it. I've been full-time guiding now for 25 years. It's all we do. Um, I do it for a living and so it's pretty awesome. Yes, I know I'm very fortunate, but it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. So I can fish out of any boat that I want. Um, we can get you know, anything we want as boat wise goes and we've, we've chose to go with the Duckworth line. Uh, the reason we chose to go with the Duckworth line is because A is how they build them. And, but everybody builds boats pretty good. I mean really there's a lot of good aluminum boats out there. But the Duckworth boats kind of just take it up that one little step higher. You know the finishing, the welds, the, the uh, attention to detail. And the main thing is for us is service after the sale. Okay, When you buy a boat Boats work great, and you know you never expect a problem, of course. But once in a while, something goes wrong. Maybe an electrical, maybe a battery, something happens, and you have limited time to get out of the water. That's why I go through Gone Fish and Marine. Gone Fish and Marine out of Dixon. Mark Blanton over there owns that. The staff is awesome. They take care of your stuff. They get you in, they get you out, and they take care of what you need to have. So for me, if I have something go down, boom. I hit Gone Fish and Marine, they take care of it, and that's why I use a Duckworth boat. Because not only can I go through them to get the boat 
It's one of the best boats built on the market for aluminum wise, um, for uh, all, all boats, but for all different types of water, check them out. But the service after the sale is key. Okay, this is a challenge. I've never fished here before. We're at Lewiston Lake. It's supposed to be shallow and weedy. I'm in nine feet of water and I'm letting out a small gold and red Dick Knight spoon. My thought is to troll it about one and a half with a Dick Knight and a fly to start with. Um, I could see fish breaking about a hundred yards in front of me. So that Dick Knight's running probably four feet deep, and uh, next next uh, offering is going to be a Tui Chub pattern Arctic Fox trolling fly. This is my top line outfit, but I do have a small bullet weight on there. Get it just below the surface. Oh, there's a fish right there. Already. That didn't take long. Dick Knight. Get it done. I don't know what he is. Oh, he fights you back there. Jump it. It's weedy in here. Very weedy. Woo! Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. He is a fighter. What a beautiful little rainbow. <laughs> I'll just lift him here. Oh, lost him. <laughs> that was awesome. Well, Lewiston Lake certainly is beautiful. It is very trouty. It is full of weeds. It's full of fish. I can see him jumping. I've already got a, a, a small rainbow to the side of the boat. And, he hopped off. I was going to let him go anyway. I didn't try to net him. I was trying to lift him into the kayak. But uh, what a beautiful lake and a beautiful setting. You could see the fog. Several fish breaking. Wow! I don't know if that was on camera, but that rainbow cleared the water by two feet. I'm in uh, seven feet of water here. And, uh, man, this just lives up to everything I've heard about Lewiston. It is just an incredible fishery and uh, incredible setting. So... Yep, you guessed it. I just got home from Lewiston Lake up in the Shasta Trinity National Forest. Um, and I gotta say, my, my first visit there left me wanting more. Um, here's kind of an overview of the lake. It's located about 37 miles west of Redding on Highway 299. And despite its close proximity to Redding, it has a real north coast feel up there. There was, you know, mist hanging over the lake, moss in the trees, stuff like that, which kind of shocked me. I've spent a lot of time, as you know, up on Shasta and in that area, and this had a completely different feel. Um, Lewiston Lake is, uh, it's, it's in the, the Trinity River watershed. It's below, the water comes out of Trinity Dam, so it's below Trinity Dam, but it's before the Trinity River proper gets going. It's 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 a it's a narrow long impoundment. It's about five miles long. It's 70 feet deep at the dam. It's much shallower in, in, in most of the other areas. I fished the upper end, which is the area known to kick out big rainbows, although I didn't get any. Um, the deepest water I saw was about 30 feet. Uh, most of the water I saw was much shallower. It reminded me of Bomb Lake. Um, Big weed beds, lots of aquatic insects. The water was pretty clear. Um, I could tell it was colored up a little bit from the rain, but I still had, you know, 12 feet of clarity. I could see the weed beds in 12 feet of water. Um, so overall, it, it was a very intriguing place to fish. Um, I had some tough conditions against me. It was raining, I had big wind, I had a big temperature drop, and because it was my anniversary, I only ended up on the water for about two hours, but I did catch a couple small rainbows, um, and I could just tell from their basic temperament that they weren't being super aggressive. They were more interested in hitting midges than any of the hardware I had with me. 
um, but the small Dick Knights did uh, did save me from getting skunked. So thank you, Mr. Dick Knight. Anyhow, um, there's a couple launch ramps on the lake. There's a big cement ramp for power boats, and there's a dirt ramp right off the road for kayakers and you know float tubers and stuff like that. The lake has a maximum speed limit of 10 miles an hour throughout the lake. So this is the perfect place for kayaking float tubing and stuff like that. It's a very popular destination with fly anglers and I can see why the, the weed beds are just full of aquatic insects. Um, small stuff, small mayflies, and as well as larger stuff like damselflies. Damselfly nymphs can be deadly there at times and stuff like that. Um, in terms of species, you know, there's a bunch of different kinds of fish in Lewiston. Um, king salmon, kokanee salmon, rainbows, brook trout, brown trout, um, and some black bass. The top attraction though is rainbows. The Eagle Lake rainbows that are in the lake can reach eight pounds and the sleeper population of browns, they can go over 10. So that's really what you're gonna be targeting when you go up there. Um, when I was there, I stayed right across the street from the lake at a place called the Lakeview Terrace Resort. That's run by um, Ryan and Jordan. Um, they have both cabins and RV sites. They have, you know, some uh, some play equipment for kids. They have a pool. No one was swimming. The temperature was in the 40s when I was there. But uh, it's a well-appointed resort, and it is your perfect jumping-off point for, you know, the Trinity Alps, Trinity Lake, Lewiston Lake, the Trinity River. There's hiking, biking, gold prospecting in the area. When we were there, we visited the town of Weaverville. We checked out some museums and stuff. Um, we visited Lewiston several times. We ate at the Mountain View Cafe. I can highly recommend the food there. It's run by some very nice ladies and uh, they, they have the A game when it comes to preparing, you know, country type food, comfort food. Had some, some really good stuff there. Um, I go back just for the food, man. I had spaghetti, I had pancakes, anyhow. Lakeview Terrace uh, Resort, it's, uh, it has some history. There's gold diggings, old gold diggings right there on the property. Um, the cabins are very old, but they've been updated. They're very well maintained. They can accommodate couples, singles, and then they have cabins for big groups. Um, the RV park's pretty extensive. They have some RV sites that have big wooden decks on them and stuff like that. So if you're looking for a base up in the the Shasta Trinity National Forest, I can highly recommend the uh, Lakeview Terrace Resort. Very nice people, very nice experience, and uh, honestly, I can't wait to get back there. I wanna fish Lewiston some more, but I really wanna get loose on the waters of Trinity Lake. I'd never even laid, laid eyes on the lake before this weekend, and it is impressive. I don't think in terms of uh, acreage it's as big as Shasta but it's impressive it has a big lower end a long narrow middle section and then a huge upper end and from what I understand the upper end is more the bass end of the lake the lower end is where the trout and salmon guys hang out um, I talked to the maintenance guy there at Lakeview Terrace and he told me 10 pound kings are common top end kings of 20 pounds have been caught there's a ton of trout in there and apparently the kings feed on small kokanee so guys that fish up there they like to pull whole sardines um big tray bait anchovies and big spoons and uh as you know that kind of trolling man now nah, that's my home run swing so anyway my next visit up there i'm going to be hitting trinity lake i'm going to get back out on lewiston and show those fish i mean business um as long as i'm not hampered by the weather i'm very confident i'm going to have all my regular gear in the kayak Plus, I'm going to throw in a fly rod. So anyway, if you've never been up to the Shasta Trinity National Forest, I strongly encourage you to get up there. Um, it's just it's just quite the area. There were very few people. There was, there was just tons to do. And uh, it's truly a sportsman's paradise. Anyway, that's our destination for this week. Lewiston Lake, Clearwater, Smart Trout. Put in your time and... Uh, you will not be disappointed. So if you haven't been up there, put it on your bucket list of places to visit. And uh, who knows, you might be up there at Lakeview Terrace Resort the next time I pull in. And uh, I've already got, I've got cabin 10 is mine. That's my spot. So anyway, 
catch you next time here next week we'll be going over another norkel fishing destination thanks folks Howdy folks, it's time for our This Week in Fishing Tactical Tip. And this week my message is, don't handicap yourself. Here's the leader material I use for lingcod fishing. That is 60 pound test Yozuri fluorocarbon line. Now, I've caught hundreds of lingcod on 25 pound test monofilament leaders, but I don't use that anymore. I'm not trying to catch a 15 pound link cod or a 20 or even a 30, I've done that. I'm looking for a 40 pound California link cod and that's why I'm running with 60 pound test leader material. Now, could I land a 40 pound ling on 25 pound test? Absolutely. But when I'm out there fishing huge baits, looking to, to hook a huge fish, the last thing I wanna do is hook that fish I've been looking for for so long, have him brush a rock with the line and have the leader part. So I go heavier. Now lingcod aren't leader shy, but even if they were, I'm using fluorocarbon. So again, there's no downside. Fluorocarbon reflects light at the same rate as water, and that means it's virtually invisible to the fish. Let's talk about trout. Here's a couple standard leader sizes that I use for trout. There's some 12 pound Yozuri top knot fluorocarbon, and there is the 10 pound version of the same. Um, and I rarely go below this. Once in a great while, I'll run with eight pound. But back, you know, back in the day, we had to go with four pound mono to get hit a lot of times because the trout were line shy. They could see that line. It's not the case anymore. So, <clears throat> you know, I'm always trying to catch a 10 pound rainbow. The last thing I want to be doing up at the stump fields at, at Elmanor is running with four pound test, hook that fish, have him brush his stump, and he's gone and I'm full of regret for probably years. <laughs> Go heavy, put the odds in your favor because there's no downside with these modern fluorocarbon lines. The fish can't see them, so why handicap yourself with super light tackle? Um, there's also an advantage of using this in, for your, your leader material when you're running with dodgers, and I'll tell you why. If you're using a light leader with a dodger and you're using a bait that, that's, you know, you're hoping to transfer action from the dodger to the bait, something like a gulp minnow or maybe a hoochie, maybe a fly, if you use light line, the, the limpness of the line is going to absorb some of that action and it's not going to be transferred to the bait real well. I like to use 12 pound test behind a dodger. It's stiff and I'm getting almost all the action from the dodger transferred to the bait. And when I re-rig lures, let's say I'm going to re-rig an Apex or I'm going to re-rig a wedding ring spinner, I rig them up on 12 pound test fluorocarbon line. There's no downside. I'm getting more power and I, and I have full, almost full invisibility. So I'm getting just as many strikes, but I'm putting more of those fish in the boat. I can run a tighter drag, I fight the fish less. If I'm going to release the fish, I stress them less. I get them up, I get them into the boat or get them into the net and get them released. But uh, the last thing I want to be doing when I hook a trophy fish is worrying about using gear that is too light. There's a place for ultralight fishing. Don't get me wrong, but you want to put the odds in your favor when that trophy fish comes knocking. I'll catch you next time for our this week in fishing, tip of the week. Anyway, that was awkward. This is Kel Kellogg. I'll catch you next time. I'm signing off for now. Get out there and get after those fish, guys. Nice. Ooh. Oh, power dad. <laughs> oh, they are feisty. On behalf of Lucy the Fishing Dog, Wes Ward, and the rest of the team, this is Kel Kellogg signing off. Please join us again next Thursday for another episode of This Week in Fishing.